easy social media ideas for churches and for youth ministries. Well, hey everyone, welcome to the Hybrid Ministry Show. I am your host, Nick Clayson. We are looking to make digital discipleship easy, possible, and accessible. My strategy for social media in 2024, and it's looking like beyond, if you didn't know this, uh, short form vertical based video, so Reels, TikToks, YouTube Shorts, account for 90% of the internet's traffic, which is just a wildly high statistic. And so people are getting on the internet to consume these styles of videos. And so we, as churches, as communicators, as people who want to have an impact in our world, we need to be on these platforms. And so if you do want to be on social media, I recommend taking that strategic approach, posting those types of videos. And I also recommend not just posting only spiritual content. So one of the funnest things to do is post content that is just fun, interesting, funny, like a game of some sort, and then hook people kind of with that sort of piece of content and then hopefully drive them deeper down your funnel, which you will eventually get them to more spiritual content. And then hopefully you'll get them to a long form version of your spiritual content, which from there you can hopefully, just like you would live in the room, just like you would live with the sermon, uh, prompt them to take some sort of meaningful next step closer to Jesus. My new favorite phenomenon for churches and for youth ministries is to create content with my students, not just content for my students. Generation Z and subsequently Generation Alpha are looking for the personal touch. They've they've grown up under the rise of customization. Generation Alpha is gonna be growing up under the rise of personalization with algorithms and AI and things that can make life just very tailored to them. And so they don't wanna necessarily get on their social media and see a bunch of stuff that I have done for them They would rather get on social media and see a bunch of stuff that they have had an opportunity to participate in. And so a couple years ago, my resident, Caleb, uh, linked right here is my interview with him. And in it, we actually talked for a little while about this concept called the social challenge. And so where this came birthed out of is in our student ministry, we have a very, very vibrant YouTube channel. It's probably the social media platform that I pour the most gas on. If you want to see our strategy, link down below is my completely free ebook strategy guide detailing and outline every single thing I do from silly posting videos, long form version um, pieces of content. It'll help you take and adapt that and make that Uh, possible in your context but we were talking through our YouTube channel which is mostly just teaching videos and he wanted to include more students on our long form uh, teaching video section of YouTube you know YouTube's broken into different like containers you got you got posts and you got shorts and you got videos and you got lives and so he's like I want more students I think it'd be good if there were more students on the video portion and not just us staff people with teaching videos and I was like okay great so he invented this thing called the social challenge <clears throat> and the social challenge became a huge win for us in our student ministry in multiple arenas but early on it would just be him or maybe him and like another one of our students or him and another one of our interns filming some some students doing some sort of challenge just think like any sort of youth group game and then they would just capture it on camera and so that was on a wednesday night our team we don't work on fridays and so he would come into the office on thursday and he would edit all day long to try and get that thing ready to go And then from there, um, he would get that thing posted and off he would go um, putting our students on on the YouTube channel. Well, over time, that just became hefty every single week with a Thursday all-day edit. Like that was the only thing he had like really bandwidth for to do on Thursday. And so we let that thing run for about a semester and then we made an adjustment. And I said, what if we, uh, because in the meantime, we were filming short-form vertical-based video content with our staff. And we would film like once a month and we would get together and we would do some of these ideas one of the ones I'm about to share with you here in just a minute. And we would uh, we would film them for us. And I was like, what if we put students behind that camera? And so that's what we did. And so my favorite, um, we do in our student ministry now, we've honed it in where we do four different types of social challenges. And so most months are made up of four different weeks. And so on week one, we'll do this. Week two, we'll do that. Week three, we'll do that. And week four, we'll do that. Uh, or we'll just do whatever is running low. And so I have every single thing, every single piece of content stored in a Google Drive. And I can see, as I post daily, I can see which of these 
these pieces of content I'm running out of and then thus which ones we need to film more of on the next Wednesday night. Some of the other advantages, youth pastors, that this has had is this has created a space in our student ministry for students to come and let their voice be heard and for them to actually get a chance to be on social media themselves. And then they're actually looking for it later on down the road. Like, when are you going to post my video? Let me know. And it was funny. Last week, I actually pulled a kid aside and I said, hey, I'm posting yours tomorrow. And so then he texted me. I didn't send him the link or anything like that, but he texted me and he's like, that was good. You know, typical seventh grade boy, but uh, he he reached out of his own accord, right, once he saw his video had been posted online. And so it's had some major wins for us in the room. It's actually made, like, our in-person a little bit more um, intimate. Like, it's made our students actually get to interact with and know each other a little bit more. And so that's our current adaptation. We just batch record our students any given Wednesday night. Um, with these different four social media ideas that I'm going to share with you in this video playlist. The first video idea that we do, it's called drafts. Now, you've probably seen or heard these before in if you've ever been on social media. All kinds of different people have done them, and I'm not you know, claiming to be the, the author of this idea. We have no doubt seen or uh, taken this you know, from other people. We've seen it done elsewhere. And we've adapted it to our culture and to our context. But essentially what it is is you choose like any topic, literally any topic in the world that has at least 10 or more options. And the reason you need 10 or more is because it's it's sort of treated like a like sports or like a basketball type thing where you draft somebody um, to your starting five. And so if you and if you and I were doing this, uh, you might go first in any particular category. Let's just say um, let's just say basketball players, you know, for example. Uh, but by the way, link down below in the description, I have shared with you uh, um, like over a hundred different draft topic ideas as well as a gear resource list. So go ahead and click that link and go grab it. You can just have it and then you can take these and kind of copy and paste them and implement them into your church and into your social media strategy. But if you were going first, maybe you're a Michael Jordan guy, so you'd take Michael Jordan, but then it'd go to me and it'd be my pick. And the only thing I couldn't take is Michael Jordan. I could take any other basketball player I wanted to. I could take LeBron James. I could also take Bronny James. It doesn't matter. I could take whoever I want to. So I'll go LeBron. And then back to you. You might think that the third greatest player of all time is like Magic Johnson. And that's fair. I would, I'll go ahead and give you like the thumbs up on that. Come back to me. I'll probably take like Larry Bird or something like that. Um, back over to you. Let's say you take, uh, maybe you're a big Bulls guy. Maybe you take Scottie Pippen. Great. That's fine. I don't agree with that necessarily, but I appreciate you trying back over to me. I'll probably go Dr. J, um, or Wilt Chamberlain, maybe I think. Um, and as I'm doing this, I'm commentating it, right? I'm like, you know, I'm thinking this thing and that. Um, and so I'll go ahead. I'll take, I'll take, uh, I'll, end, I'll end up taking Wilt. No, 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 no. What am I doing? I'm, I'll take Shaq. I'll take Shaq back over to you. And you're like, all right, fine. I'll take Kobe. Great. That's great. Back over to me. Now I'll take Wilt, okay? And I'm not I'm not like building a team to play with, and you can set those parameters because I can't have Wilt and Shaq playing on the same team. They're both centers, right? Back over to you. Maybe you're going to take like a modern guy, so maybe you're going to go like Kevin Durant or something like that, and I think that would be fair. Back over to me if I wanted to take a modern guy, uh, though I don't think he's uh, top 10 of all time, but I do think he's great. Shea Gildas Alexander, represent the Oklahoma City Thunder. That's my favorite basketball team. And then what you do at the end is you'd say, hey, let us know, comment down below who you think won. Okay, now in that particular case, um, everyone watching would definitely say that I won. But maybe you got some big uh, Bulls fans, some, some people from Chicago watching your content. Maybe they would say that you won. And they would say that you picked all the GOATs and Kobe Bryant and Scottie Pippen and all the other people, right? Like whatever the case might be. But you just literally go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Uh, another option you can do is you can snake it. And so if you don't know, it's like uh, first person, second person, second person, first person, first person, second person, second person. That's the concept of a snake draft. I don't I do not do that as much in like a two-person draft because um, it's just like one, 
two picks, two picks, two picks, two picks, two picks, and then it ends with one. Um, I'd rather just kind of do the the bounce back. But <clears throat> either way, your choice, your decision. You figure out which you prefer. Um, and then I need to edit that sucker. And so typically when I do it with anyone on my staff, uh, those drafts end up being like five minutes because there's a fair bit of banter um, and we're sort of like uh, gassing people for like uh, what they said or we're flaming them for how bad we thought their choices were. And either way, we're kind of going back and forth, uh, making fun of each other. And so that you have you have some decisions to make in the editing process, right? You got to get it down. For me, I try to get every video under 60 seconds because YouTube Shorts' cap is 60 seconds. And so if I can get it under 60, then that means I can post it on YouTube Shorts, TikTok, Instagram Reels, and Facebook Reels, all four places. Now, if you don't want to use YouTube Shorts, though, if you're trying to reach teenagers, can I please implore you to consider using it 95 percent of teenagers are on youtube and so if you are in youth ministry you should definitely be using youtube and thus you should also be using youtube shorts but if you don't want to use youtube then you can make it longer because those other platforms allow for longer uh, time segments of videos and uh, you can edit it directly on your phone um, my edits they look like this if you're watching here on youtube um, i'll also share with you my photoshop template in that uh, free downloadable uh a document where I am sharing, uh, you know, all the different hundreds of ideas of draft uh, topics and content that you can use. But um, if you don't have Photoshop, you can literally design this uh, in anything. You can design it on TikTok. In the TikTok editor, you can design it on an app like CapCut for the free version or the paid version. You can do it on the Instagram Reels uh, editor. Like it's literally the sky is the limit on where you can edit it. I like to edit in Adobe Premiere Pro. So I use Adobe Photoshop and then I import those files into Adobe Premiere Pro. And the good news in all of this is that for a while I started doing it. And then um, homeschool kids are the best in our student ministry because they obviously they, they don't go to school for as long during the day when they do homeschool. And I can have them come in and they can use uh, one of our spare computers that has Adobe Premiere Pro loaded on it. And I've been just teaching them how to use Adobe Photoshop, how to use Adobe Premiere Pro. And I had a student, I kid you not, who he took all of uh, one of our other like video type adaptations. We had like like 12 of them and he edited every single one of them like in one sitting. Uh, he, he came in, it was like his maybe fifth time in. Um, and so he had to like learn and get up to speed, but on that fifth time, I mean, he just crushed them to the point where he was loving editing. And then he said to me, Hey, can I come in tomorrow? And I was like, bro, you've done them all. And before I was getting students to come in and edit, I was editing them all myself, every single one. And so I was always behind. I never was caught up and he got me completely caught up. And now the other good news in all of this is that in addition to students editing it and getting them posted, I've also had students begin to take ownership and leadership in the room of where we're filming these things. So we've actually built out a full studio. You can see linked down below our studio tour and all the gear that we use. But sometimes we just use like a camera on the back of a cell phone and like external microphones. Other times we use like full podcast studio type microphones and run that into like a focus right camera and we film it off our Sony ZV-E-10. Again, all of that is linked in that uh, studio tour episode if you wanna look at any of that, purchase any of that. <clears throat> um, and then if you do it off your phone, you can just edit it directly off your phone. If you do it off of a, a camera, you gotta take out the SD card and then download it and then go edit it in some sort of software on your computer. Again, either one of those strategies is fine. You decide what you want. You can do a really heavy edit or you can do a really minimal edit. Like either of those, either of those strategies works <clears throat> um, and, and you can kind of do whatever works best for you in your, your time frame, right? But um, once those students uh, edit those, I also have students capturing them, right? I have them running the room. I have them uh, getting students in place. I have them literally running like action and like clapping their hands. And um, it was actually really helpful because one week when we were filming a bunch of uh, these draft style videos, the camera audio cut out, but I got all the mic audio. But I was like, how am I going to sync up empty words um, to real audio? And because of the claps, I was able to find the clap on the camera, 
link up that spike and then they were able to be to be linked and so um i at this point in time like this this strategy this four part video strategy students are running it on wednesday nights capturing the videos and then students are editing it and all i'm doing is overseeing it and posting it and so my guess would be if you're in youth ministry and you want to create content with your students that this is what you're looking for because you may not feel equipped you may not feel like you have um, what it takes or even the knowledge behind social media in your students they do they do, and if you're willing to build the infrastructure enough to then be able to hand that over to them, I think that's a fantastic model, and it takes more work off of your plate. And so if you're interested in exploring uh, how to do that or even just looking for maybe like some some next steps, I offer coaching, link down below. Uh, reach out about that. It is really affordable. It's really cheap, and I would love to help you get that up and running. Now, on to easy social media video idea number two. I'm glad that you asked because I'm sure you were looking for it. It's actually going to be linked here on screen in the very next video, which I have here on my channel. So go ahead and tap that. Go check that one out. And without any further ado, we will see you over there because we are making digital discipleship easy and possible and accessible. And so as always, don't ever forget to stay hybrid.